need to understand what technology can do, how to benefit from it, and how to control the risks. I don't think there was any one thing in my life that's made me suddenly realize this is where you need to go, this is what you need to do. It was more a, an accretion of small things, a gradual and a growing realization that life is good, life is pleasant, life is fun. And it goes on for a while and then life is short. Life is something we don't get enough of. We can have longer lives, we can have better lives, we can have lives that are richer and fuller, and we can do that if we think about it and if we prepare and if we plan. It's pretty obvious at this point that medical technology is improving and that our lifespans are getting longer, and more to the point, that our healthy lifespan is getting longer. It doesn't do any good to live to a hundred, a hundred and twenty years old if you're wretched and miserable and unhealthy. But if you're a hundred twenty years chronologically, but you feel like you're thirty or forty, that's pretty good. And we're moving in that direction. Now, pretty obviously, as technology advances, as nanotechnology advances, medicine will get new tools, new capabilities, and new ways to keep people alive and healthy. Well, imagine going to the doctor in the future, and you say, Doctor, I, I feel these funny things, and he diagnoses you, well, you know, it's, you have cancer, you know, and you say, oh, well, what do we do about that? And he says, well, we're going to inject you with these small medical devices. These small devices float around your body. They're smaller than a human cell. They can distinguish between a cancer cell and a normal cell. And if they're in a cancer cell, selectively remove that cancer cell. So what is today a horrible killer, a fearsome disease, in the future will be a visit to the doctor's office, an injection, and oh yeah, come back and see me next week to make sure it works. And there's a question. Will you and I be there to enjoy this marvelous expansion of medicine and lifespan? Well, the answer is maybe. So this bracelet is an Alcor bracelet. And basically, if something unfortunate should happen to me, if I should find myself in the hospital or otherwise in an unhealthy state, this bracelet has instructions. Call up Alcor in Scottsdale, Arizona. Let them know that I'm in a hospital or wherever I am and that they should come out and be prepared, if necessary, to cryonically suspend me. Basically, you're cooled to the temperature of liquid nitrogen where nothing happens. No chemical changes, no changes to the tissues. And once you're cooled to that temperature, you can stay at that temperature for years, decades, centuries, essentially unchanged. Until we develop this remarkable medical technology that can not only keep us alive and healthy, but we'll also be able to reverse the kind of damage that occurs in a chronic suspension. For those of us who think the future is going to be a pretty good place, it looks like a good idea. Well, think about the alternatives. 
Either you sign up or you don't, and either it works or it doesn't. Now, that creates a payoff matrix with four possibilities. If it doesn't work, or if you don't sign up, well, we, we know what the outcome is in that case. But if you sign up, and it works, you'll wake up in a future which cares about human beings, cares about human life, has remarkable technology, will find out, oh yeah, that worked out the way we thought. Oh, that other thing, no, it worked out very differently than the way we thought. We'll be able to see what happens. Of course we're moving towards a better world. That's the whole point of all of this. Technology can benefit people, and we have to make sure that technology does benefit people. Every Sunday, explore uncharted territories, uncover high-profile secrets, and unearth the unknown with Tech TV's critically acclaimed series, Secret, Strange, and True. Never before have so many people had power 